Hi, Nick Granville here. I thought for this lesson what I'd cover is playing a little bit more through changes rather than just playing the changes literally what they are. So if we take the example of the blues which I've been using, we have B flat, goes to E flat, goes back to B flat and so on and so on, and then goes C minor, that was C minor, F7, B flat in a jazz blues. And what we can do is in that C minor to F7 we can play some movement. We can go C minor, D minor, E flat major, E diminished, to F, in this case F9, back to B flat. And that sort of follows what the bass player might do. And even if the bass player doesn't play that, it doesn't matter. It's still going to create a, a nice bit of movement that's logical and works. And those sort of movements really bring can bring things to life. So for example, another way we could use that is um, if it goes, instead of going C minor, F7, B flat, we could go C minor, B7, B flat, so creating that tritone substitution. Um, and there's, a, there's plenty more that we can use. Uh, we can go B flat to E flat, B flat, and then we can go 2, 5, 1. Now it doesn't matter if the rest of the band doesn't play all of those chord changes. All that matters is that if we're doing them, that, that there's a reason why we do them. That there's a, a logic behind it. If there's a logic, they will work. So try and find all those changes in between. So for example, on the blues I did this. Back. You don't just have to do them as chords, you can do them as a soloist. I'll start from the beginning of the blues so you can hear it in context. So you could hear there I went So there I played a little more literally like I'm playing RPGOs. So I hope this tip has been helpful to you. My name's Nick Granville and thanks so much for watching. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel because there'll be more coming soon. Thanks very much. Cheers.